Hey, welcome back everybody, Lawn Chair Mechanic. Today we're going to be changing the oil on my 6.4 liter power stroke. Uh, I'm going to show you how it's done. And, uh, the bad thing is, today was the coldest day of the year so far, so it's pretty cold out here. I can't pull it in the garage because it's too high, so we're going to have to just suck it up and get it done. Um, I got to warm it up right now. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Uh, I always like to start it up before I do an oil change, let it warm up a little bit, get that oil a little bit hot, it drains out a lot better. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you, if you own a 6.4, nothing's cheap. <laughs> Everything's expensive. Um, so if you're one of them kind of guys that like to lay around on the couch, don't have a job, and you're hoping to have a diesel truck one of these days, you might as well forget about it. It ain't gonna happen. First thing, the best thing to do is take the ride to the bank. Take out a small loan. Go buy some oil and a filter. Because it ain't going to be 20 bucks. It ain't going to be 30 bucks. You're talking close to $100 to change oil in this truck. You don't buy oil like this. You don't buy oil like this. When you buy oil for this truck, this is what you buy. Five gallon bucket. Okay, here's the drain pan. So you just gotta take this bolt out, do the drain plug, slide this five gallon bucket. That's the nice thing about having a lift on this truck. The bucket just slides right underneath of it. So we'll loosen this up, drain the oil out. Alright, I got it loose. I'm gonna unscrew it here. There's a magnet on the bottom, top of it. Plug. That's on there for a reason. You want to make sure you don't lose that into the drain pan. That magnet's there to catch any metal shavings that might come out of your engine. Which is a good thing that happened there. So you want to make sure you you leave that magnet intact on top of it. But make sure it always stays there. Alright, we'll let that drain. And we'll go out here. 
God, you need to trick. What you got up here is a where your oil filter's at. You got a cartridge filter in this thing. This is oil filter. And right here is your fuel filter. I just changed both fuel filters in this truck about a month ago. They're not cheap either. So you have one here, and you got one underneath the driver's side door on the frame rail which is a bad place to have it believe me when you change that you can't put a drain pan under it because it just comes out of there falls into the frame rail and just rolls down the frame rail and goes everywhere so it just, it's a terrible design just to ruin it right now but that's a different video we'll do that one of these days too so what we want to do is take this off I just use a large adjustable wrench you could use a socket whatever but I find it just easier just to use an adjustable wrench so we'll take that top off and get this filter changed okay Take this off of here. <coughs> now these filters always come with an O-ring. You want to make sure you replace the O-ring every time you do an oil change. Because they will go bad. And there she is, pops up out of there. This slides right up out of there. Just like that. Let it drain out a little bit. Flip it over. And that's it. And what you want to do? It's cold out here. It's hard to work my hands. Like we got a little visitor coming up to see us. Step down here. Deer sneaking up the hill, staring right at us.
next week deer season. It'll be hiding. You won't see a deer once the deer season starts next year or next week. Got, actually, got a little bit of snow this morning. Uh, it'd be nice if we get snow next week for the first day of deer season. Alright, I got that all cleaned out. Now, what you want to do, I'll get me a little screwdriver. to let you know I usually put a little bit of oil on this o-ring it's hard to do with the two hands I just dump this over and put a little bit of oil on my finger to go back in. Get my gloves back on here. New one. You just put it right back down on that one. Push it down. Screw it on there. Make sure your O-ring seat's good. Not 
So it is. We won't wipe all this off. We'll be spilling a little bit of oil in here. Now we gotta wait for it to drain. And we'll put the plug back in and fill her up. This is where you fill her up, right back here on the back. And while I do my oil changes, I always check all my other fluids, make sure they're all filled up. Power steering. Looks good. Brake fluid back here. Master cylinder. You can see it from the side. Looks good. Get over here and get the transmission fluid. You need to check the transmission when it's running. Gives you a more accurate reading. But you can check it when it's not running. But best practice is to check it when it's running because it's it gives you a more accurate reading than when it's not running. So. Alright, we'll wipe this off. When we start this back up, we're going to check for leaks, make sure nothing's leaking. You'll notice I got a lot of things unplugged here. So I did away with the EGR. So I deleted that. The intercoolers are gone. DPF underneath deleted. This truck runs so much better now. So much more power. It's 6.4. I mean, people don't like them, but I've had no problem with this one whatsoever. This engine runs great. I mean, I've had a few major or minor things, but nothing with the engine. So we'll see how good it's draining down there and see if we can plug it up yet. Alright, there, here's the magnet I was showing you earlier. It just snaps right on there into your plug you see there's no metal on it so I have no major issues inside the engine if you have metal flakes on this ever you better get it checked out because you got some major problems happening inside that engine so you want to keep an eye on that when you change your oil alright that's pretty much drained out of there I'm going to go ahead and get it started in here. Oop, my magnet just fell off. I usually just start it up in there like that. Get this bucket out of the way. Then I can wipe her down.
I can't really feel my fingers. Alright. Wipe that down real good. That way you can check for leaks and we'll get it started back up. Alright, we'll go back up top and start filling her up. Okay, one thing I did make it a lot easier. There's one. We'll bring it up here. You can see. I'll pour it in at. Alright, there's the first one. You get it to carry, so on and so on until you get her filled up. Okay, oil's all changed, all the fluids are checked. I started it up, there's no leaks. 
that's all there is to it folks I mean it's pretty simple but the only downside is you have to go in debt to get it done but uh, all joking aside I mean a little bit extra money is worth it for this truck I mean it's it's been a great truck I just drive it back and forth to work we go on some camping trips once in a while three or four times a year pulls this big 30 foot camper up here uh, one more thing we want to do is uh, I always grease one of my grease things this truck doesn't come with a whole lot of grease things on it but once you start changing parts the new parts come with grease fittings so I'm going to get up under here and I'm going to grease all, your, all the fittings, ball joints, tie rods, and everything else that needs it. So stay long for, for next time. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot, guys.